Well, Adrian, we've come out to St John's, of course, a very special place for you. This is where the Manx is being taught as a first primary language. Yeah, that's it, the Manx um, language guild, the Bunskol Gilgak, and, and so here the, the whole of the curriculum, the primary curriculum, is taught through the medium of Manx Gaelic, and there's 70 children here now. Are you having big celebrations this year? Yeah, it's the 10th anniversary of the Bunskol, so it's, it's sort of 10 years of continued success, really, and I think that's really something we, we, you know, we should share with the rest of the Manx community, and, you know, internationally, really, this is, it's been a success story. 70 children here, parents, staff, you know, very happy, and and children are getting not just learning through Manx, so we're keeping that um, linguistic heritage alive, which I think is important. But there's really strong advantages of bilingualism generally, of children learning through another language. It tends to make them more intellectually alert. They tend to be better at their own their their, their first language, such as English, um, as well as as the Manx, and and also there's loads of other advantages. Just reading something recently about early bilingualism, they reckon now offsets even Alzheimer's by about five years. So there's lots of physical and mental advantages to learning through another language. Well, since it's great pictures here, them all having a, a sing song as well. <laughs> so it's it's in, in, totally throughout the whole day, you you get immersed in the two languages, or is it purely only Manx? Yeah, it's just Manx. They do English a bit later in the school when they um you know when they do English mm. lessons as it were. But yeah, but the whole curriculum's through Manx, you know, and that's um. It's great to see, really, and it's a you know my young I speak Manx to my young son, who's only 18, 19 months old, and it's, it's been quite a revelation for me to see that how he, you know, he just understands both Manx and English. I speak Manx to him, and wife speaks English to him, and he just he, you know he has a phenomenal level of bilingual understanding even at such an early age. It's just pick it up. It's, it's no problem and sometimes as adults we get maybe a little bit intimidated by language there's no need to be but as, certainly as a young person it's just what they do here really of course you don't have a catchment area i, I trust like other schools have to keep yeah, now in yeah. the future to their areas yeah no i mean it's open to anyone in the isle of man you know it's just part of the normal education system it's open to anyone there's a great ver a variety of parents who send their children here is they mainly do it for two reasons one is to keep the language alive and that cultural tradition you know and if the, um, the people in the Isle of Man aren't going to do it no one else is going to do it for us and um, but also the strong advantages of bilingual education really so it's a combination of those two reasons have you been hit with any cutbacks yet well I mean you know we're all in the situation where we know we're going to have to cut our cloth you know and and you know the Bun Skull and the organization I work for we're all aware that we have to maybe change the way we work and stuff but you know we're, we'll deal with that but um, I, I'm hoping that there continue to be space in the Isle of Man for the language, the culture and the identity because, it, you know, without that, you know, what are we really? And I think it's an important message to get across that there's more to the Isle of Man than just say, you know, sort of it's, that it's a, just a simply a well-regulated offshore tax jurisdiction. Clearly that's fundamental. And But there is a dynamic between culture and business, I think. The, the two aren't mutually exclusive. You know, I used to live in London for a very long time. Most people's knowledge of the Isle of Man was pretty low, really, you know, Isle of Wight, that sort of stuff, really. But if we can demonstrate to people there's more to the Isle of Man than just, you know, that it's full of accountants or um, nothing wrong with that or, you know, it's perceived to be, a, you know, a place where people come to avoid tax. It has its own culture, its own traditions, its own history its own political system and it has its it has its own because of that you know our own history culture and identity we have every right to have our own particular tax system you know it's all part of the makeup which goes to make the Isle of Man what it is today well you're also having a video made at the moment what's that all about yeah well that's part of the celebration really um, just a short video piece a day in the life of the Bun Skull again for parents for staff and for children just to because sometimes I think we need to, and it's you know it's certainly these days sort of reassess where we are, where we come from, and what what we aim to do, uh, we aim to do over the next ten years, and also celebrate something which I certainly feel it has been a success story. This is something the Isle of Man has done very well over the last 10, 15 years, and that's whether you speak Manx or not, whether you're really into it or not. You know, we can all celebrate something we've done well at. Okay, let's have, round, round up with a bit of Manx then, just to uh, yeah. thank everyone for watching <laughs> well, the video, whatever else. Well, well, Guramai son, son Chick and Michelle Drin Kane as Tamieka Vunskol as, well, Shilea Brow Green Acton. The weather's not too bad either. Guramai.